Hey guys, let's go through the glitch tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to do a glitch the best you can without a Sapphire plugin, just the default resolve settings. So what you want to do is lay out your clips on the timeline. I typically have a small cross foot fade in between a couple fra uh, frames that works well if you're transitioning with a glitch effect. Um, so usually two frames works really well. Otherwise, everything else you're going to do in the color tab. So if you go into color, the default uh, DaVinci Resolve effects. So if you go in here, you're going to want to select scan lines and then JPEG damage. Put, put in uh, nodes for those. And in this case, I just kind of played around with a few settings. So I set a dynamic keyframe with the line frequency at 178. I'm going to turn off the JPEG damage just so you can see exactly what the scan line does. So 178 gives you these lines here and then I went out three keyframes and set it to 500 so it transitions and then I also went back to 178 um, at the end. I also played around with the the colors here the red shift and green shift and you can see here that it kind of also kind of adds a little effect there. Uh, here in the middle I think I set the green to zero and red shift to one and then at the beginning I think I started off at zero for both so you kind of play around with that and it kind of adds a little of the color uh, of the glitch effect in there now for JPEG damage this one is kind of distorts the image in this case I set the quality to 50 and then a few keyframes out I set the quality to 10 so you can kind of see how that uh, uh, causes this this damage effect here to take place so that's how you do the glitch effect or the best glitch that you can possibly probably do uh, with the standard base resolve plugins so let's take a look at what you can do with the sapphire plugin so the two sapphire plugins you want is jpeg damage so that's s jpeg damage and then s shake okay in this case i created static keyframes with JPEG damage, I um, basically loaded some presets that are default with Sapphire, but I'm just going to go through the screen here rather than uh, go to those presets. Quality 1, Res Factor 1, Relative X is 11.9. I kind of set that based on playing around with it. Uh, most of these are all default. Actually, they are all default. The errors is where you really want to play around with. So 0.5 and 0.75. For the error rate and error block density, those are the ones you can you can mess around with to kind of get some different effects. The rest of these really don't make a big um, difference to the uh, the glitch effect. But essentially, you want a static keyframe here to turn it on, and a static keyframe here to basically turn it off. So very simple. If you don't know how to do a static keyframe, you just right click, add a static keyframe, and then you go in with your settings. Now under Shake, most of these are default. The amplitude frequency phase and Z distance but where you can really kind of play around with the effect here is the amplitude so if you want it to shake side to side um, the default is like I think it's like zero but you can um, kind of play around with this 0.25 and so forth I found that 0.228 allows this thing to shake across the screen um, which kind of gives you that quick jerking effect uh, with the glitch. If you also want to do that in a Y axis, you can do that also. Uh, but in general, I don't mess. I don't typically like it to go up and down. I just like it to go side to side. So you can see here the difference between the defaults. So that's essentially what I've got there for the glitch effect. Uh, if again, this is a static keyframe. I just encourage you to play around with this to customize it as you see fit and uh, have fun. Peace.